Hey, Moon, my lonesome companion. When I moved here for good, from, you know, the old country, you were the closest friend who kept me company. Never felt in the right place back there. Never felt quite in the right place here, especially now. But I'm not quite alive, not quite dead, not that Slavic, not that American. But maybe it's about time I finally carved out some space for myself. It's been a long road, hasn't it? Wish me luck. I catch him in front of the art hole because, of course, he had to be the first person I meet there. No way. No, 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 no. I'm going to be the laughing stock of the entire city if I don't show up to the resolution of my own investigation. How about you... Demonstrate a modicum of courtesy. Courtesy, girl, I should put you on trial. I can't guarantee I eventually won't. You've messed with Kaiser, the eminence grease of this city. Beat him to a pulp like a random goon. He will do everything he can to destroy you from now on. And my bet is he'll succeed. Whatever. Whatever will be, will be. For now, at the very least, I'd like to show the court that I'm not a baby fledgling who can't see a task she was given to the end. You're making a huge mistake. How'd you even learn this meeting is happening in the first place? Maybe I'm not as trash an investigator as you thought I was. I never said, but you're showing it. That's not a fair assessment. I wanted to finish this whole mess by myself for your own good. It would be nice if you asked what I think next time. I'm actually pissed he tried pulling this off without me, but I'm not letting it show. I'm counting on being able to guilt, him, guilt trip him into submission. He, his deep sigh of resignation proves that my tactic was successful. Fine, but you will stay quiet the whole time. No tricks, ifs, or buts. But of course, this way. Step into the maw of the gallery. All right. I think I am going to just push through. This will probably end up being like a 40, 45 minute video is my guess. But anyway, we'll go. The celebrations of power are almost over. Everyone is back to their usual respective styles again. Looking weary of each other's company trapped in their own little worlds. The art hole is nearly empty now. And Kadir is gently strong arming the last remaining nobodies to leave the premises. Eventually, only me and a select few of New York Camarilla VIPs remain. Aha, Miss Sawinski. Barely made it, huh? The asshole with the glued on smile spots me first. And he's just as authentically enthused to see me as ever. So he finally shows his face around here. I wasn't sure if you'd join us tonight. Kadir made this meeting sound like a one-man show. The preparations took me a bit longer than I thought they would. I apologize. Are you, by chance, planning to surprise us with something? Well, if I was planning on something, it wouldn't be a surprise if I told you now, would it? Can I have everyone's attention, please? We're about to begin. Everyone remaining in the building gathers around Kadir. Ah, exciting. Is everyone present? Present. And accounted for. My prince? Yes, before we begin, let me welcome an uh, unusual guest into our fold. She gestures to a corner from which emerges a silhouette that would have never, ever appeared here under normal circumstances. Name's Tork. I'm the Baron of the Bronx. I was delegated here by my compatriots as an oversight authority. I'm here to observe the results of the investigation. Nothing more, nothing less. Let me stress, this is a one, one last time. This is a one-time occurrence, meant to alleviate the tensions of the city. Not a symbol of mutual recognition. Not in the slightest. I peek at Addison's face to get a feel for how a hardline loyalist might grapple with this arrangement. His expression betrays, betrays no surprise, only a slight discomfort. Even if he is fine with it, the prince must have been extremely convincing about the necessity of a temporary truce or some 
or about some Machiavellian tactic she's got ready up her sleeve. Who knows? Of course, there might be times we have irreconcilable differences, but there are times that they have to be temporarily put aside in order to quell unrest and open paths for constructive, meaningful change. If anyone like, would like to voice their concerns, now the time is now. Torque, Arturo, and Panhard exchange glances. Normally, I'd consider it an innocent gesture. Knowing what I, knowing what I know, I roll my eyes. A stick or a carrot, Torque. What made you break and sell your compatriots? How much do you really know? If not, Kadir, may I? He steps into the middle of he steps into the middle of the room and clears his throat theatrically. First, let me plainly state that the conclusion I'm about to present is by no means my own achievement. It is the result of a tireless investigation conducted by talented kindred I won't name here. A telling glance in Torque's direction serves as a succinct explanation for why he refuses to call them by their names. And of course, Julia Sawinski, whose ceaseless groundwork... Anyway, for the past few nights serve as a foundation for the findings that are about to be revealed here. Thank you, Julia. It's not the first time he sets out to oversell my achievements. As the sheriff, my role here is mostly representative. I spent the last few days overseeing the celebrations in Elysium, making sure no harm would befall anyone present. Luckily, none did. Looks like the prince's decision to move forward with the event was the correct one. And for that, we should extend our thanks to Kadir. And not, and let us not overlook our guest to a degree. I managed to convince my key allies that diplomatic action is the only way forward in this case. No matter how wrongheaded the enemy can be, we still need avenues to negotiate and communicate. I'm curious how Tamika would react to him looking like a corporate bastard designing the future order, dismissing potential for change that lies in unrest. No wonder she dumped him. Spare us the empty pleasantries and let Kadir move on. I don't have all night for this. Right, I'll be concise. Douglas Boss Callahan's remains were found in his office by one of his ghouls first thing in the evening. The first kindred to confirm it was another Anarch Baron. Tork, present here. A mystery book author would refer to the circumstances of Callahan's death as a classic as a classic closed room mystery. A metal door lock from the inside served as the sole way in. There's no more there was no murder weapon, no useful testimonies, and the evidence was how do I put it? Barely circumstantial at best. What was left for us was one hell of a puzzle. One where the answer couldn't even be approached using the tried and tested questions. We were presented with a poorly timed power upheaval, a tense situation where long planned celebration was in danger. Suddenly, all of us were faced with an uncertain future. Everybody benefited, yet nobody died. Yet nobody did. No one was especially fond of Callahan, but it's not like anyone seemed particularly keen on removing him from the equation, especially at this time. For a moment, we're sure this was the beginning of an offensive on the part of the Camarilla. We started wondering just how violent our retaliation should be. And as for us, we were momentarily convinced that the Anarchs were planning to blame us for their own internal power struggles. A tense situation resolved only thanks to skillful and swift diplomacy. Dare I say, yet another victory for our talented prince. Julia made sure to examine all the contacts Callahan might have had in his last days. In both sects, her efforts were tireless. And only rarely misguided. He just had to spit out at least one biting remark, didn't he? Ah, well, he's probably just covering his ass. 
But as exhaustive as they might have been, they only served to model the possibility, not explain them. Callahan had a lot of enemies, but they were most but they were the most inferior kind of enemies one can have, folk who barely ever thought of him anymore. In other words, no one really had a particular interest in getting rid of him because they could always simply work their way around him. Just before last Christmas, just before last Christmas, he even witnessed the first ever successful first light raid against his extremely profitable blood trade supply line. The lone ace up his sleeve, all down a downright shady ability to perfectly maneuver all around around all SI activities gone. Callahan's decline was apparent to all and a domino effect made his empire slowly crumble. Up until recently, he'd done an admirable job keeping up with the times and getting away with murder, but suddenly all of the prison's spotlights were on him. The recent stories we hear about him all depict a depressed, downright manic recluse lashing out at everyone struggling and utterly failing to fit into the new reality he found himself in. As closed room, no evidence of a closed room, no evidence of struggle, a lack of strong what done it, the corpse be the corpse being found in the very early evening hours, the conclusion is simple. Callahan's death Callahan's final death was self-inflicted. Suicide to put it in simple terms. Huh. Silence has filled the room. So, uh, wow, that's really, that really is the angle they'll be pushing, isn't it? Let's hear it, Sheriff. I'll explain. It was an independent detective who first set me on the, onto this theory only last night. There is no suicide note of any kind, of course, but the message our recently departed has sent might not have necessarily been a verbal one. The peculiar thing was the position of the body. It was like an arrow pointing at us to notice something. It appears the last thing Callahan saw in his own life was a portrait of one Lord Castle Ray Ra. I keep pushing that. The second Marquess of London, London Dairy, which is coincidentally where Callahan was born. To most, he was a reviled traitor, a heartless suppressor of all dissent, the main threat against each rebellion the Irish had gone through, successful in all ways but those that mattered to his people. Some call him a tragic figure holding together selfish allies against a common threat, always fighting for painful and unpopular compromises, ruined by his overwork, sickness, and poor public speaking skills. Not hard to see why Douglas Callahan would empathize. Polite Snickers. Indeed, especially when you realize that the sickness in his blood, his failures, the hatred from his own people, and the growing paranoia led him to commit a dramatic suicide within his own four walls. Ah, uh, I see. The assumption is, instead of stabbing himself to death with a knife or a pen, he decided to let the sun embrace him and its warmth. Castle Raw's face, face burning into his eyes, a poetic final death. It's not a closure we might have wanted, but it's but probably the best explanation of his motives that we're going to get. Does everyone follow? A heavy silence fills the room. Nobody speaks up except Prince Panhard. To me, it's all perfectly understandable, agreeable, and most importantly, if it's the man I've come to understand over the last two decades. And sentient murmurs resonate through the room. Agreed. And I might and might I add, there's some irregularities in the handling of the crime scene, but the anarch's leader's findings suggest that Callahan's resentful ghouls were to blame. Folks have been real happy to see him dead. I'm all is all I'm saying. And they went overboard with their celebrations. They've all been interrogated, though. Yes, I've received all the resulting intel, and it's done nothing to change my mind. Their depiction of Callahan's, Callahan's state of mind only serves to 
support the suicide theory. It is my suggestion that we all announce these findings to our respective communities first thing tomorrow night. Sounds reasonable, and I think that concludes this meeting. I'll let the Keeper of the Elysium do the honors. No time wasted, huh? Alright, so you won't have anything to add. Any questions to ask? Take your time. Silence. A look at everyone just sitting out, sitting it out in perfect agreement. Congrats, everyone. Congrats. Yes, we've achieved a perfect victory. No loose ends. No rocking the boat. No nothing. Makes you want to puke. How many of them contributed to this final report? How strongly does Kadir believe the shit running from his mouth? He's always been a Camarilla loyalist, a fanatic even, but... Miss Julia, any final statements? This is it. Now or never. If anyone can blow this pathetic charade wide open, it's me. But there's no coming back from this road, and it has a cost. Ugh, excuse me. I spent all of my life and on life on social climbing, and the sunken cost fallacy is kicking in. Challenging them here might be my only way of ever making it out of the pit I'm in. On the other hand, maybe this is the time to head into the unknown, kill my ego at least temporarily. Shut up the voices of the elders screaming in my head, betray my La Sombra instincts. Make all these ghosts go away and figure out something new, no matter how scary it might be. Do I dare or do I don't? I feel like there's an incredible prize waiting to an incredible prize to be won, weighing right in front of me. If I dare take out this revolver with its single bullet I have hidden on me. And invite everyone here for a crazy game of Russian roulette. But I also feel, but I also get this foreboding gangster movie feeling. Like this is the scene where the future mobster could have gotten out but didn't. In the end, did Callahan think all the splendor of the golden era was worth this pathetic end? It's like there are two cells for battling for dominance inside of me. One of them has to die, the other gets to live. Honestly, it's a flip of the coin. I, re I reflect on all the kindred I've met, lessons I've learned, choices I've made over the past few nights to make a decision. So let's see if this is something I get a choice on or something that traits will decide. I feel like it's traits. And then... Feeling like I'm simply following the way I conducted this investigation to its logical conclusion, I respond. Damn. No, nothing. No, nothing. Kadir has done an excellent job of summing up the entire case. A barely detectable tension in the air disappears. This was the first time that they might have had to reckon with something I said, but luckily for them, turns out they won't. Well, looks like that's all, folks. Yes, looks like it. Excellent. Might I be going now, then? Places to be. Kindred to see. Took the words right out of my mouth. You can see it in some of their faces. Everyone is happy. Samira, will you escort Mr. Torque out? Me and... Thomas will have to appease Mr. Payne for disrupting the sanctity of the Elysium. Certainly. Right this way. Tomorrow night, we're back to being enemies, of course. Of course. Isn't that just what you want to hear, Addison? Oh, s oh, spare me the condescension, Helen. During the commotion, I'm approached by Kadir. He looks me in the eye and makes a show of exhaling deeply. I have to go and see everyone back to safety now, but thank you for not pulling any stupid tricks. I really appreciate it. Who did you think I am? Someone else, and I apologize for that. Sometimes you just see something and completely misinterpret it. We'll think about how to handle the future, particularly the Kaiser issue tomorrow, alright? I'm even here tomorrow. He pats me on the back with a short, awkward smile. See you then. Everyone slowly scares, but I... Just sit there keeping eye 
contact with the only person here I still have some unfinished business with. The art hole should have closed its door, have its doors closed now, but nobody considers it weird that I'm staying. After all, the only person that's still accompanying me is the keeper of the Elysium. Aren't they a happy bunch? All's well that ends well. People were getting nervous like you really had some good cards to play. You're a poker player? Occasionally, it's a very socialite thing to do. Played with Jennifer Tilly once. Must be easy to keep a poker face with, you know. I know, it does help. And you seem to know a lot about the cards other people are holding. Like all great games, poker does share some principles, lessons, and necessary skills sets with real life. I take out another smoke. This conversation is bringing the tension back, like two fencers carefully looking for a hole in each other's defenses. I found a file about you in Kaiser's car. Seems like he's worried about you, the only unpredictable variable in his equation. Ah, uh, see, that's the one card I didn't predict you drawing. Speaking of not predicting something, when I was walking, when I was waking up tonight, I didn't expect a good friend would provoke me into coming here. Who might that have been? Not a lot of people in this room had any had an inclination to act friendly towards me in any way whatsoever. Sure looks somewhat sure looks like someone made a risky play. Even great players make dangerous plays sometimes. You know why? No idea. Boredom. It's boredom that gets to you. Even when you love the game, there's always this fear that it might turn into a perfectly predictable series of optimal plays. Time to make a play that might not seem optimal at the moment, then. A direct attack. You're not really Catherine Weiss, are you? I don't know who else I could be. Let me phrase it differently, then. You are not a Katarina the White. You're not Ekaterina the Wise, the Agitator of Prague, a Bruja Elder causing turbulence all over the world, are you? She laughs. That file must have been pretty thorough. Kaiser knows what he's doing. That's why I'm afraid of what he might do to get revenge. Rightfully so. Maybe I'll help him out in exchange for a favor. Snuff out the Sombra Meddler, strike a partnership, promise to keep each other in check. If that was a joke, it wasn't very funny. And just so you know, I've made precautions. It was a bluff. Honestly, I expected more of a reaction. Kaiser's documents. Did they mention anything about Ostrava? They say that's where you were born. As Hanu Urbanova was unlucky enough to immigrate to New York City at the perfect age and with a pretty accent of approximating that of a Katerina. Honestly explains a lot. Kadir told me that Aisling once organized a blood hunt after Catherine the Katerina. That's that she was both a liability and too intertwined with the city's history to give up on her. This solution, you, were deemed the best possible compromise by all parties involved. The particulars aren't really described. It's theorized that Blood magic was used, maybe flesh crafting. I do remember a few images. Her accomplices embrace Christoph, the man who caught me apologizing that the others broke my jaw as if he wasn't to blame. Violent brainwashing. Is this a reference to. Is this a reference to. Um. Oh, what is that game? Vampire the Masquerade Retribution? I have it. I guess I don't have it. Redemption? Is this a reference to Redemption? Weird. I think it is. Anyway. But what's done is done. I might not be a Katarina of the Wise, but I'm definitely Catherine Weiss now. I feel as good about the situation as I probably can. She's the brooding Batman and you're the fun-loving Bruce Wayne? Zorro and Diego La Vega, something like that. 
a debutante who sleeps a lot and parties a lot only has to do something unpleasant from time to time. Do you hate her? Sometimes, but I mostly pity her. I've come to accept my fate, and I don't feel much trauma when I see my jaw in the mirror the way she does. Some pig broke her. Some pig broke hers centuries ago, and she still relives the assault every time she catches a glimpse of her own face. All that power, all that reach, all the appearances, still not enough. Don't get me wrong, but is there a point to all these questions? Oh, there definitely is. I think it was reading your file that made me ultimately decide against turning this investigation upside down. Was it now? An immigrant from Eastern Europe comes to New York City, takes the position she always expected to find herself in, is molded into someone who is no longer herself. The story struck a chord. I felt like you were maybe ever so slightly pushing me to follow your way, to lose myself in a position of considerable power. I could see Julia Sawinski sharing Hannah or er, Urbanova's fate, and to be honest, it scared the shit out of me. Catherine shakes her head. Funny, Ostravia is just 15 kilometers away from Poland's borders. I know. I think I've been there once when I was a kid. Parents love to travel. Who doesn't? She takes my smoke, turns it, turns back, takes a deep drag, and returns it to me. All of these longest established organizations with time their practices always degenerate start draining everything out of their participants turn into a cycle of abuse aimed at no one in particular but funny thing is if the victims aren't allowed to into positions where they feel they can perpetuate the abuse they feel the abuse is abuse is aimed specifically at them there's no winning move here do you understand what i'm trying to say I think you're making excuses for yourself. She desperately tries to stop it, but she laughs. Sounds a bit like a harpy screaming, but it's strangely endearing. I take a drag of the cigarette she took from me earlier. My inner grade schooler excitedly informs me that it's an indirect kiss. Let's walk outside. I need to close up shop. Dawn is almost here, and we still need to talk about how to get you out of Kaiser's grasp. I nod and follow her to the street. So I hear you've been living with a human. Yeah, it uh didn't work out. Oh, and why is that? I don't know how to how this I don't know how this, do I dare call it, sisterly bond came to be, and I know it can't be beyond tonight, but I'm savoring every second. She's been, uh, turns out she's been single white femaling me. I don't follow. I come home, I find her wearing my clothes, smoking my cigarettes, pretending to be me. The creepiest thing in the world. Hmm. So you find that pretending to be someone else is the creepiest thing in the world. I see how it is. Oh, piss off. That's a low blow. Why would she do that? No idea. I just yelled at her and saw her running out. She probably she's probably back home now. I hope. No, I don't. I don't know. I know it looks bad, but maybe you should just, you know, ask her why she did it and then make an informed decision. What are you talking about? That would be reasonable. I couldn't do that. I don't do that. She loses herself in thought for a moment, visibly torn whether or not to tell me something. This might just be Katarina speaking, but I was thinking about you two and Carthage. Everyone is arguing about... Arguing with her about that name. Some people claim it has too much historical baggage. It's a myth. It didn't work. It was still... Vampires taking advantage of humans. But it's still a beautiful dream, and you two are like the embodiment of it. You mean that apocryphal story where Carthage was not was 
not destroyed because the Romans were greedy for land, but because kindred and kind coexisted there in harmony. That's a pretty deep cut, you know. How long ago were you embraced again? I've been reading a lot to cut. I've been reading a lot to catch up. The inner journalist slash former copywriter in me is still refuses to die. Heh. <laughs> again, it might as well be a Katarina speaking, sending you to die for her pipe dream. But that's the best option I can think of to get away from here with a goal in mind. I'm listening. Head for the Anarch Free State of California. Look for a man called Giles. If you're alone, you might have to do a lot to prove yourself. If you're with your friend, you might have to do a little less. If you succeed, you will be able to fight for the noble cause of establishing a new Carthage. It's hopeless, but no matter what tough act Kadir is putting on, it's still better than waiting for Kaiser to act. Might as well give it a shot and then see what happens, see what's next. Thank you. Don't thank me, idiot. I'm sending you to the West Coast to die. Just so you're not here to blabber about me to Kaiser. And so that I can please my boss. Now scram. The sun is almost up. Sure. Thank you, nevertheless, even if it... Ah, super finger. Even if it's just to piss you off some more. Anything else I should know? I don't know exact... I don't exactly know how practicing you are. Not even Father Leonard knows. But in an hour of peril, keep St. Jude the patron saint of desperate cases in mind. I'm not even religious. I mean, really. But in my darkest hour, someone told me to keep him in mind. And maybe I wouldn't be here if I didn't. Yeah, I know of St. Jude. And happier times, Mom used to joke he was the patron saint of her sex life. I see. Fellow Catholic guilt survivor, huh? That classic Eastern European upbringing. I'm not admitting to anything. Stay safe, Catherine. And thank you. See you again someday, somewhere, Julia. Although probably not. I wait for her for the first and probably last time and leave the Elysium behind. Hey. Hey. She's staying on the bed. It's obvious she was crying before, but is trying her best to hold up. Where were you? I was, uh, finishing my big investigation. She sniffs. So, how was it? Uh, I fucked it up big time. Didn't even put up a fight. Don't tell me you expected anything different. I did, actually. Used to be a shining example of an investigative journalist. Maybe I never felt comfortable being an example. The wince on her face proves that got to her. I'm not happy with who I am. Jesus, you're really copying me in every damn respect, aren't you? Fuck you, I'm being serious. I know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be an asshole, or rather, trying to not... I'm not trying to be an asshole, or rather... Oh, or rather trying not to be an asshole. We really are two leeches who got stuck to each other, huh? Like a two-person human centipede loop or something. An Ouroboros? Or a uh, Mobius strip? I got lost in my own metaphors. I take out another smoke and slowly decide what to say. You're extremely good looking, kind, endlessly energetic. You've got a steady job as an artist and an even steadier influx of cash. Why would you want to be someone else? You're extremely good looking, clever, talented as fuck, immortal, and, an etern and eternally young. But you still have that horrible deep well of self-loathing within you for some godforsaken reason and it fucks me up as much as it does you. Probably. Yeah, I get it, but single white female? It was an impulse. It was the first time I did it, I swear. I didn't know what got into me. That timing... That timing was just... Fuck. Maybe I just wanted to see if I can be a better you than you. Don't know. Maybe I need ther therapy. But I'm tired of looking for the kind of therapy that feels like it works and is not just brainwashing me. She might be lying, but I don't want to believe she's lying. 
I choose to believe she's not lying. What do I have to lose? I think I want to give it one more shot. She raises her head. Do you? Yeah, I think I do. There's one condition, though. She shoots me a cold look. What condition? Well, I told you I fucked up my investigation, but not how badly. Well, it looks like I'm no longer safe at NYC. I need to run. First thing tomorrow evening. And the only way out is... I see is a bunch of loons living on the west coast who are trying to bring about a utopia where humans and vampires could coexist. It's probably even more dangerous than staying here, to be honest, not to mention how dangerous it could be for you, and I haven't even figured out how we're going to get there safely, but yeah. I'm beyond tired of sitting on my ass, collaborating with monsters. This is the first page of the second chapter. This is a lot to take in. I know. But I think I'm in. I know I'm in. You've got a future. You've got rich parents. You don't have to do this. In case you missed it, having rich parents is like a goddamn, I don't know, original sin in my book. I don't want to coast on their money. I want to try to do something that fucking matters. Are you certain? About as certain as I am that deep state exists. That's good enough for me. I'm off to sleep. The sun is probably already up. I'll pack up your clothes. What? What for? Are you planning to unleash Dark Dakota on me again? Don't say anything. As I said, I'm trying to not... I'm trying to be an... I'm trying not to be an asshole. It's a process. The day went by and I woke up like any other night. That was the first surprise. Dakota following through with the plan was the second. We're leaving the city. I don't know about her, but I'm kind of hoping it will burn the moment we leave. Fuck these, all these out of town psychotic assholes who murdered Callahan and partied on his grave all week. Fuck the opportunists who couldn't even seize the moment to, and do what had to be done. Fuck this temple of mammon where the truth is impossible to find. Fuck the Bronx, fuck Brooklyn, fuck Queens, fuck Staten, fuck Island, and fuck Manhattan. Fuck Manhattan in particular. Okay, I'm done. I'm probably going to try to stop at motels, drink from truckers and hitchhikers and whatever. Exciting. We'll be like a pair of serial killers prowling America's highways. Remem remember Near Dark, that nomadic vampire movie? Of course I do. Is that what we're planning to do in the Midwest? Maybe, maybe not. We'll improvise. It just hit me. Won't motels and such be closed because of the virus, though? Shit. I don't know. I didn't think about that. Maybe I really should have robbed a bank and just paid the circulatory system goons to smuggle us to the West Coast. Ah, whatever. It might be fun. Remember, you'll be the one paying for everything. I don't want to expose myself to anything, and I don't want to expose anyone to anything. Seen enough shit talking online about this exodus of New Yorkers who are probably spreading that thing all around the country right now. Gotcha. We should wash the car, I think, and you'll be disinfecting yourself before any time we touch. Okay, that's just being freaky. And maybe you should wear a mask. Nope. Land of the free and... It's the land of the free and home of the brave. I guess. Hey. Yeah? Do you love me? Of course I do. For now, at least. I still don't know if I love her. Or if I can even love anyone, for that matter. I'm a fucking monster, after all. I don't even know if we'll exi exist next month. The prospects are not looking good. Although I can't even see myself in the rearview mirror right now, I will remember this image of us leaving the city somewhat melancholic and somewhat hopeful forever. And maybe the meaning of this image will be clarified with time, or maybe it will just force some more positive description on it, and that is what I'll and that and that is what I'll believe. No matter what happens, even if the ocean of blood lies before us. I'll make this a cherished memory. 
Whatever possible salvation still remains for me. It probably lies in the eyes of another. Bad ending. Oh, no. I have chosen to forfeit the game. Let's see. There's a good ending. I could die and one other. All right. Well, uh, that is it for the series. I'd like to thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time with um, probably the new werewolf game that just came out, at least on the day I'm recording it at this. And I think I'll been out for like a week or so by the time I put this episode up. So yeah, anyway, uh, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.